Good morning, I'm Peter Sharoshi and this is Stories from the Frontlines, Drug Reporters live video series with activists and professionals working in the field of harm reduction. Today, uh, we will speak about the situation in, in France with uh, two uh, professionals, uh, Lorraine Collard from uh, Federation Addiction and, and Etienne Norman, the uh, head of the Carud drop-in center in the city of uh, Toulouse. Hello guys, how are you? Yes, I think you are, sorry, you are muted. <laughs> Etienne, you are mute, muted yourself. So, yes, so it's perfect, I'm okay. Good. And you? Yeah, we are good. Lauren, do you hear us? Because we yes. don't hear, yeah, okay, good. So both of you are here. Uh, so can you explain us what is the situation right now in France uh, with, the, with the COVID epidemic? Uh, is the lockdown measures now easing? What about the, the number of those infected? So do you see the light in the end of the tunnel? <laughs> So I don't know because there is a problem, I think, with Lauren. It's more her that I have a national vision. But I can answer for Toulouse because I'm, uh, I'm from France and Toulouse is on the south of France. It's a part of France that is not the most um, COVID uh, influence. Now, there is uh, not a lot of epidemic uh, cases. Uh, we have uh, we had um, most of the problem in the north uh, east and um, uh, with uh, the the group of Paris land. Um, of course, uh, in all over the all over the country. But uh, actually, they say that we are going to to open all um, after the two of June. Uh, so to to see the light, it can be. But we don't know because, uh, as you know, as uh, in all the country, maybe there is a second one. Um, I think uh, that uh, what's happened was more um, to, 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 to make an invitation to, for the poor people uh, from precarities and so on, because there is a lot of services in uh, in uh, um, not in arm addiction and addictology, but uh, more in a social part that was closed. So we can speak about that after, but uh, I don't know if I um, answer mm -hmm. to all the question. Yeah, thank you very much. We, okay. we are trying to get back Lauren who has uh, uh, connection problems, but we, we, we hope that she can uh, join us soon. So before that, before she can join us back, uh, Etienne, can you explain us uh, how this crisis affected people who use drugs in, 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 in your city. Can you talk a bit about that? Okay. Well, it was a, it was a special, it was a big problem at the beginning uh, with uh, the, the confinement. I don't know in English if we can speak about the confinement, it exists? Yes, confinement, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. confinement. So um, it was a, a big problem because the people uh, make the choice of uh, of being uh, in confinement, but they don't make the choice of stopping their, their using. And uh, some of them that are more poor than the others, they don't have the, the, the choice. So they don't have an economic resources from the street. Uh, because uh, with uh, all the confinement, there is nobody inside the street. Uh, so we don't have problem with uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the furnitures of eating and so on, but we have a lot of problem relating to alcohol, tobacco, uh, drugs. Um, so in the, in, the, in the legal part, uh, there was a lot of uh, center of uh, urgency that they call us with a lot of pressure from uh, the people that they were inside because uh, people uh, start to be um, without uh, alcohol and without tobacco and as they, um, they decide to make uh, confinement uh, strict mm -hmm. they, they, they start to, to have problems with people that they were intention so we start to our action uh, in it was more to reduce the arm reduction action from the center because we we can't have the collective part so we make a drive and so on drive to, to give the material we go on outreach uh, we develop because in my center we have a problem 
uh, arm addiction program of uh, of methadone that is uh, in a in a, in a part really, really simple to to access and um, we start to to have a lot of people that try to to have a methadone because at the beginning uh, there was a problem with uh, the the prescription the prescription the, the doctor and so on and the access and there was problem from, from the street to access to, to to methadone or to some products uh, opioid after we decide to make a outreach to go to the squat and uh, to people that uh, live all over the street and all over the the, the department uh, to see what's happened to them and of course we have another program that is a program of arm reduction uh, by uh, distancy i don't know the name in english but it's like it's like the the, the people they can send mail sms a uh, message from uh, their, their phone and we have uh, always a, pe a person that is behind uh, a screen or behind the phone and they can have a exchange relating uh, to their life, to their using and uh, can have their, their material all over there inside uh, the Occitanie part. But it's, uh, we have a program of that that is um, all over the France. In each uh, great big land we have uh, that kind of program. But uh, we were thinking that the people, they are going to, to come to that kind of program. And in fact, no, because they, 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 some of them come and some of them, they are like, okay, I don't know, this is new. I'm not sure uh, of, uh, that I can ask to, to a screen <laughs> uh, to, to give me some advice or to give me some, uh, to, to send me some material. But at the beginning, there was another problem, and it was a big effect relating to the people that they don't know. They were, they don't have the good information, and a lot of them that they were alone inside street, car, or squat, and that they don't have information. They they start to, to be stressful because they have control of police relating to authorization to go. Uh, and come back, and of course we have a we in Toulouse we we work a little bit with the policy. So I uh, start to prepare a special authorization for them to go to the, the to, to my center or to or to to, uh, to go to have methadone. And um, the, in fact, the policy they pass they say, oh, so you are open? What's happened? And I say, okay, there is a problem for that people. You make some control, and of course they, they are on the streets, so stop to make some control. They need to have uh, if uh, if um, if uh, care and so on. So that's that part uh, start to be okay because after the, the users association start to make a special authorization uh, for, for the people from the street and the users. And people come to have a lot of material uh, during uh, 15 for, uh, for a month to, to have a limit to the, 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 the moving. And um, that, that was the, the beginning with a lot of um, anxious, a lot, lot of them were anxious because they, they start to have uh, the price of uh, cannabis that is going up and they don't have money from the street or from the, the illegal resources and uh, they start to, to, to be um, uh, without uh, product. And uh, of course, the, all the product were there. The price of cannabis is going up. The cocaine start to be like, uh, because there was, a, there was in Toulouse and a lot of time in, in France, there was a stock so that they, we don't have a problem with the cocaine, but we have problem with uh, uh, in uh, a couple of land, we have a problem with the heroin that they don't have it. In Toulouse, it's not a, a lot of, a, it's not a, a city with a lot of heroin. Uh, so I don't, we don't, we don't saw that. Thank well, you. I, I, I don't know, I'm going to, to, to think, but uh, the adaptation was uh, really, relating to help the other dispositive for emergency and that they have people inside that they don't know how to do with uh, the legacy drugs like uh, tobacco and alcohol and we start to give them uh, some um, advice 
uh, with um, with um, advice from a Federation Edition and uh, with uh, Modis Bibendi that we work to 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 have a not um, that to, to have practice to to uh, to give uh, uh, them uh, some advice and to to explain uh, to advice to each question and we say that uh, 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 our work was more to to start to have um, I don't know it's like a kit I don't know it's okay yeah, okay. okay and uh, resources to give them all the resources to decide to decide for the people that they were there so this kind of resources was relating to the to the money and uh, Oh, okay. I'm a director of a center. Can I buy alcohol or tobacco? Yes, of course. There, there is that law that that allowed allowed you to buy it and to give to the people. The the spirit was that the people, and as I say, as I say to them all the time, the people must be without uh, difficulty, psychic and physic. We are not going to pay you uh, the 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 the. Defense. <laughs> the high. We're gonna. Uh, we're not okay. gonna we buy gonna your high. Pay you the 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 highway because uh, it's not like that. We we are not uh, in an open highway, uh, but uh, we are going to give you all the things you need to be cool and to 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 assure your confinement. That was our spirit in France, yeah. in, uh, mm. and we we work with that. That's very interesting, and I see that Lauren could rejoin us. Uh, yeah. Lauren, can you uh, confirm that this this was uh, also representative to the whole country, or this this progressive attitude? Uh, Absolutely, what happening in the other parts of France. Well, uh, the situation, as uh, Etienne described it, uh, for the bit that I heard, was really reflected everywhere uh, in every area in France. We have differences between regions, obviously, in terms of uh, the quality of product that is uh, consumed or the, um, the facility or uh, the avail availability of resources. But the situation as it stands during the lockdown is really similar uh, in terms of um, the question of accessing resources inside housing centers. And it has been really... Um, well, a sad opportunity, but an opportunity still to to make progress in terms of legislation, in terms of explaining uh, the need for arm reduction and for less um, criminalization. Even decrim would be nice, really, in France, but we are not there yet. But uh, to to have less criminalization of drug use and way better access to arm reduction and um, you know, on no, no judgment facility, as we say in French. So uh, the housing centers have been improving a lot of their practices all over France. I know, for instance, that in Normandy, um, an arm reduction center who couldn't be open during the lockdown because of the lack of space to welcome people uh, in a very secure way, they, were, they went and uh, became an outreach team uh, so they are only outreaching now, and they have been building very strong partnerships with the how with the housing um, outreach team also. And so now they are working hand in hand, and they have um, well the housing uh, team has been really understanding even better and seeing the positive effects of uh, welcoming youth as much as we can here in France. So it's been really leading a great. Uh, progress also in terms of uh, public stakeholders understanding the need for arm reduction, for better arm reduction. And for instance, on the OST access, the question of uh, changing the prescription was done uh, nationwide. So everybody in France now uh, is supposed to have access to a renewal proposition of OST uh, methadone actually in pharmacy up to 28 days without uh, having to go to the doctor now. So one of the main challenges with the lifting of the lockdown, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna be short, I promise. One of the main challenge is um, to make sure that we have this, these measures that are going on and keep, keep on going after the, the crisis period. So that's taking a lot of effort now to make sure that um, it's not only a, a, um, 
it's not only during the crisis uh, period and era, but it can change um, for the long term. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Etienne mentioned uh, that uh, they experienced rising cannabis prices in Toulouse. Uh, what did you experience in other parts of France that was also the case? Did you make any survey on, on how the drug market is changing now? Well, the French branch of the EMCDDA, so the French MCDDA, um, has been really looking at that and we have been collaborating with them, obviously, to make sure that we access the, the shorter way uh, and the quicker, uh, the better, the, the, to monitor the level of prices, especially on cannabis, but also on other products. So um, Etienne mentioned that for cocaine, we don't have the same level of difficulty in accessing uh, cocaine, but the question of cannabis is a really particular one uh, also because of the lockdown and the question of young users in France, it's it's a bit tricky because they have been uh, confined, uh, they have been uh, under lockdown with their family and without uh, the possibility to have the same access to cannabis. So the question of um, the families discovering how much the user needs or needs or wants to have access to cannabis. And well, it has been really uh, difficult, difficult for some families and some users. So we have dedicated teams inside the network who have been really actively reaching out to young people to make sure that they don't get in any, uh, in too much trouble regarding their use. Um, and the question also of the absence of the black market or the not, not the absence completely, but the reduction, the drastic, drastic reduction um, of the black market has also been, and Etienne mentioned it, has, has also has have consequences um, in terms of uh, financial resources for people uh, and for people who use and sell drugs also. So they have been uh, faced with the challenge. But now um, with the French uh, monitoring center, we have seen uh, a start of an increase in terms of, quali of bad quality cannabis. And of course, it's something that we, we were expected, expecting. So um, the French uh, center, the French monitoring center on drug and drug addiction have been publishing reports that are available online. And I know that there have been uh, also included in the MCDDA's report. They have worked really closely with the transporter survey and we have been promoting that obviously in, in our network. Both of you mentioned uh, shortly the police and we know that France is not the most liberal country when it comes to drug laws and law enforcement. So what are your experiences with uh, the police attitudes uh, during this crisis? Do they show some restraint not to arrest so many people or is it the same strict uh, law enforcement going on in France? Both of you. I can start and then I'll give the floor to Etienne if you want to tell us how it is on the field. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've seen is that the police is obviously more pre present in the streets, but also they have um, a priority in terms of making sure that the lockdown is respected. So now with the lifting of the lockdown, we're going to see how it's changing, but what we've seen on the national level uh, and in some region more than others, obviously, is that the police has been um, more uh, progressive in terms of uh, orientation to the arm reduction facilities also because the priority is really not uh, to arrest people because we don't have magistrates, the justice is not, uh, well, it has been posed also and the prisons have been um, clearing out a number of detainees. So it's really not fashionable to put people in jail, which is a good news for us, obviously. And it's not, um, I mean, this is something, so, this is also something that we want to see after the crisis to, to be maintained in the long run, is that the police have been more and more pushing people to access healthcare and to make sure that they are uh, inside housing centers and not out in the streets. Um, or even worse, how, uh, not in the police stations. So that's what we've been seeing. And we've been promoting that with the European Forum on Urban Security also, who has been really helpful in terms of accessing um, down the city halls and uh, the police uh, at national and local level. Etienne, if you want to tell us how it is for you. 
I don't know what can I say more. I just uh, want to tell you that, uh, um, in fact, uh, the police, they, they start to be more cool. <laughs> they start to be more cool. Um, they, don't, they, they were really strict with the confinement. Uh, for all the people uh, um, in Toulouse, here I live in in the, in the camp of Toulouse, and I, I was with a drone and a helicopter around me when I was with my with my with my uh, with my dog. <laughs> so, um, but uh, with uh, all the people was like that. So it was a little bit st stressful, and I uh, give a lot of anxious. So people they they they. they they were anxious with the product, with the the lack, of, the lack of product, with um, with the police, and uh, with all the control. So, but uh, when they start to arrive to some of the, of the control uh, of police, they they start to realize that the police they just want to see the authorization, and uh, they don't uh, they don't take care of. Uh, of the effect of the, the states that they have, and they, they, they let them uh, go, going. It was not um, because we know, you know, we don't have um, uh, users only inside the street. We have users uh, inside the land. We, say we have users that work. We have users that uh, they were inside uh, uh, and they, they sell some product inside um, the, the poor poor part of, of, of our city. And uh, there, that, that was a little bit different because when I was to, in, 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 with my motorbike to go to the street, to that kind of land, uh, all the, 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 the police were there. They, they make a lot of control to that um, poor neighborhood. And uh, uh, that was uh, not good for the traffic and for the economy. And so, so for that, there was a, a little bit, uh, there, there, there was some, some problem relating to deal. There, there was uh, in Toulouse, and but I saw that there was uh, some problem in Paris, so some problem in Marseille. So we know that uh, that kind of um, that kind of economy, that kind of um, of uh, market, is not it's not uh, easy to 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 to. to <laughs> to, to make a communication with them, but the, the 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 thing is that the police were there all the time when I was passing to to, to the roundabout to, to the point roundabout no uh, point uh, from bref. um they, they was there on the on the street and making some control and that was not uh, really cool after there was the the the, the part of uh, Ramadan. Uh, that arrive, and they they start not to be there like that. We are like that in France. We are not. Uh, we we say that we are not racist, but we have uh, some uh, actor that is like a racism uh, relating to poor and to some people. Okay, uh, a few years ago there was a kind of discussion about uh, France going to dec decriminalize drug use and then uh, then this discussion was stopped or I, I don't I didn't hear about it anymore so can you tell us like what is what is what is going on now is there any chance that uh, the the drug use will be decriminalized in France well uh, I can take this one maybe uh, so uh, I hope that at some day, it will be decriminalized, obviously, um, but yeah, so it's some it's a subject that is rising and then getting uh, buried again and then rising again because of the civil society efforts, obviously. Uh, so we've been uh, really mobilized with also our, our partners, obviously, in France to push for that debate. And it has been um, uh, on the table uh, in the last two years, maybe, uh, because of uh, um, a new measure that has been push pushed by the current uh, government to make to transform the um, the penalty for drug use from a prison uh, sentence to a fine, but to a financial uh, sanction. But uh, now it's. Yeah, you can have what went on the floor and what was uh, accepted in law is that you can have you still have exactly the same section um, in terms of prison time and um, 
and obligation of care and so on. Uh, but on top of that, you can also have a financial fine if the police who arrest you um, wishes to go quickly and don't go to the justice system. So you don't access the justice system, you just have to pay a fine. So that was the debate maybe that you were referring to, Peter, because it's one of the most recent debate about drug, um, the drug policy that we had in France. But this is, of course, this is not what we promote. And this is something that we went strongly against uh, because it's just like adding up to the sanctions available to the police for drug use. And um, this is really not something that has been proven effective and it's not proven effective anywhere and it's not based on any evidence, obviously. And it, ha it has been, it will create even more difficulties. So I'm sorry that I don't, I don't really have a good news on that front, French drug policy. The good news is, however, that there is a debate going on um, about the possible legalization and regulation of the cannabis market, but it's not um, currently uh, productive, producing anything. It's the base, uh, the base of, of that is um, a report that was uh, asked by the government to the parliamentaries, um, to, the, to the National Assembly really, uh, to make sure that we have covered every possibility um, in terms of organi uh, organizing the, the regulation market for cannabis, if and whenever we would eventually want to legalize this market. That's where we are at. But evidently with the current crisis, uh, things have been paused and stopped, but it will take, uh, take place again. It will start again next week. So we are in relations with, the, the, with some deputies, with some member of parliament on that uh, specific report, but we don't have any clue right now currently regarding the production that has been, that will, uh, that will be published afterwards. So this is one, well, two of the main actualities and news regarding um, that issue. Also, we've been promoting the latest report of the Global Commission on Drug Policy, who has been really so helpful and plenty of great ideas. And also with, in relation, obviously, with the arm reduction um, surveys and so on that will definitely and can continue to prove that decrim is effective in terms of access to care and human rights for people who use drugs we've been doing that for so long now in france but we are keep going we are keep we keep pushing that because uh, it's where it should go but the ideology in france is really really strong as i'm sure that you know uh, the question of um, legal uh, legal highs and not illegal highs uh, are so like you know divided so you can't have uh, a proper think about the regulation of the alcohol market and you can't have a proper think about the regulation of the cannabis or heroin market so it's really difficult but we we keep going and we have good faith because on the other hand some news show that we have been closer than ever to a proper debate and an evidence-based debate in the national assembly uh, it's something that is getting track in the public opinion. So, yeah, we can't be 100% confident, but we, we have good hope to have a proper debate sometime in the near future. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, legal highs and uh, new psychoactive substances. How, how uh, prevalent is that in, in France? Do you see that it's rising or who, who is using uh, these substances? For example, Etienne, your, do your, your clients use new psychoactive drugs? You're, you're muted. Can you switch turn? turn Excuse on? me. I didn't hear, the, the, I didn't hear the, the end of the question. Excuse me. Yeah, the question was that, you know, uh, Lauren mentioned about legal highs and uh, these new psychoactive substances. And uh, I was asking you if you experienced that, uh, uh, that, that this, this, the, the use of these drugs is, uh, is prevalent among your clients. Does it, is it rising among your clients or uh, what can you tell about that? The, the the people that they use uh, speed or amphetamine or cocaine that they were inside the space, they start to 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 
to, to have a growing uh, um, an augmentation of uh, their consume of uh, alcohol, for example. Uh, some of them uh, that they don't have um, uh, cannabis, they start to try the CBD. Um, that was a lot, uh, but uh, there was not a lot of people that uh, make that kind of uh, switch. Uh, a lot of people that that are from the street that they don't have the the, the resources from the from the market then people give them from the street uh, they start to to use uh, pro, pro drugs like uh, medicaments and so on uh, medicine but it was not uh, a lot of people that uh, that made that kind of switch. Uh, what I was uh, repairing is, and all over the France was the same. That there was some people that uh, start to stop or reduce their consume their, their, their consume because because of that confinement. They 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 they, they don't have the, the same solicitation. They don't have the same uh, craving. They some of them start to stock. To, to, to have all the, um, the product, all the confinement. Some of them, uh, they, they, they switch. Some of them, they try to reduce or stop. So it was, um, it was not um, a movement. You know, it's, it's like a, a case per case. We have, we have to look to all the people that they come and uh, try to understand what's happened to them. I, I just want to 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 complete uh, uh, part that um, uh, my colleagues uh, Lauren say is relating to human rights. It was uh, relating to the jail because uh, there we was uh, we were uh, directly con uh, with that kind of problem. We we were looking to Italy because uh, there was the, the, the they were the first country uh, with with that kind of problem. And we were at the beginning um, start, on the starting block, like, uh, okay, what they, what is going to happen for the people there? If they cut the, the, the relation that they have and they don't make a Zoom or go to meeting or a relation by uh, internet, it's going to be a big shit for the people that they are inside the jail. Of course they did, they, 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 they did that. And so it was a big shit and uh, they start to, 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 to the, we, you know, in France, we have, we are, we are in a legal part. We have the, the right of using alcohol or tobacco, but uh, in jail, it's a part of France that you can't use alcohol. <laughs> it's a part of France that it's forbidden to use alcohol. And for that, we make some, uh, some uh, resources kit uh, with some advice to, to the, to the, with, with uh, our partner with Federation Addiction, with uh, um, uh, uh, the, the International Observatory of, of Jail, and uh, some some of uh, actors that that they were there, uh, because because uh, they, they they say that um, the hydro hydro alcoholic hydro alcohol jail jail. Um, uh, was forbidden because people uh, they, 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 they they can use it for for being uh, high. So we say that the problem is not uh, of that, and that the problem uh, that it's not um, allowed to forbid that. But uh, uh, as in uh, French right, the penitentiary they they are they are, they are allowed to decide what they want inside their jail. You know, our system, it's like uh, you are director of a jail, you have the right of uh, making right inside. And it's you that are the, the boss. So like that, we can't, uh, we don't have the, we can make some paper, we can make a, a press, uh, some declaration in press, but we don't have a ch changing uh, relating to jail uh, with, with, uh, with people that are there. So of course, for me, what I saw inside the media, it, it was that the movement get, was getting done, but we have a lot of people that were there that we know that they have some problem of uh, anxiousness and so on, and that they don't have uh, the possibility of going to see a doctor or to have a medicine. So that was a big shit for them. And some, a lot of people from the jail, they were going out 
because the 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 of course the government decided to for for the the end of the of um, for the people that they are next to the end or that the people that they don't have a big uh, a big problem of justice that they can go out from the jail like that we have less people inside and we can have more jason it was a little bit like that with jail. okay um so uh uh, another, let's say, recent development in France was that a few years ago, uh, in some cities, you, you introduced the drug consumption rooms. What happened with those rooms uh, during, uh, during the lockdown uh, measures? Uh, are they still open? Uh, did they change any, anyhow the rules? Yeah, what can I say? Because I'm not in a consumption room, so uh, I just call my colleagues from Paris and they say that there was a, a lot of people uh, that they come, they change a little bit the rules uh, because they, 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 they have the distance and uh, and uh, the, to, to wash and so on. So, but uh, they, they, the, the, the people that uh, were coming were the, it was increased. Uh, um, because there is a lot of people that they were not uh, as the park uh, in Paris, uh, they were closed. All the, 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 there was the street and so on, but there was a lot of park and people that they were on the street and uh, as they use drugs inside the park, they count. So they come more to the consumption room and it was not easy uh, because there was a lot of people with a little part of time and we can't open the consumption room with all the bank. So it was a, a little bit stressful. They work a lot. They, they, work, uh, they, they work a lot in Paris. They, they, they start to develop um, program relating to um, um, housing, uh, housing, uh, housing uh, social uh, <laughs> step, uh, like uh, they, they they start to 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 to, to put people inside the hotel and to to follow them uh, and to to like that they can use uh, drugs properly inside uh, the hotel and they can be uh, a little bit protect for for some of them but i know that they work a lot uh, with uh, people from the 115 and that is the urgency for housing people. Uh, here in Toulouse, we work uh, with uh, that with the 115, and we uh, we decided to open camping and uh, to open camp uh, to the people that they want to go there. And of course, we like in Perpignan, like uh, all over the France, some of uh, the arm addiction uh, center, they start to buy a solar shower for the people that they are on the street and because they don't have uh, access to the to the water. That that was uh, the, the most incredible part because at the beginning, we saw that the, that the toilet, the public toilet, they were closed, uh, that the water uh, was closed. So we didn't uh, understand why they, do, they did that. Uh, of course, I speak about Toulouse, but I saw that there is uh, some, uh, some of, uh, of the country, of the city that, uh, that made the same. And uh, we have to, to, to work a lot uh, with, uh, with the public uh, services uh, to try to open the point of water to, uh, to, to, but we don't arrive to that. So we buy uh, some uh, solar shower and so on to, to give to people. And of course we need water to put in solar shower. So it was uh, not easy, uh, but uh, we have um, people that have relation with the neighbor on the street and so on. So we start to have some, uh, some, uh, some uh, help from uh, the civil uh, people. Uh, if, if I can just make one, one or two addition. Yeah, okay, thank you. So yeah, for the DCRs, so we have two DCRs in France, one in Strasbourg, one in uh, Paris. So, um, well, I'm not going to add really much more of what has been said already, but one of the things that have been uh, challenged with during the lockdown is one of the main things that have been proving difficult for arm reduction drop-ins and so on is the question of the continuity of the activity. So it was really, really crucial, crucial that they could remain open 
um, because people definitely need that kind of uh, settings and places. But it was a bit challenging because, uh, for instance, it's the little things, you know, it's not the clinical approach, it's more of the operational challenge. Uh, for instance, the question of um, the, the children of staff who couldn't be in school. So people had to be work to work remotely. But when you work on a daily basis in a DCR, you can't work remotely, obviously. So how to manage that is, has been really challenging for um, the, uh, the managers of the DCRs to make sure that they have found, they found solutions to, um, to, to compromise between the needs of the private life of the staff and the needs of the professionals on the field uh, who, who had to be there. So they have been really strongly reacting and strongly um, involved and mobilized in, I mean, people have been working like crazy during the lockdown. We have to take that into account. Um, there have been uh, reinforced teams to make sure that people have, uh, are, are, um, are um, that we know where people are in terms of maintaining a relation and not having them hide away and not, not, not accessing any more arm reduction, um, for instance. So there's the, the, that's one of the challenge. Uh, one of the other challenge was also the question of uh, making sure that people don't disappear uh, also from the housing and social care, not only the um, uh, strictly uh, used uh, related arm reduction, but also the, the access to health and to social uh, gathering and care. And so that was uh, really key uh, to, to push for in all the drop-ins. Uh, and what we've seen on the ground is the question of um, to, to what point uh, do we meet new people and to what point uh, do we want to outreach and to find, to make sure that we maintain the relation with people who have been disappearing during the lockdown, who have been housed somewhere we don't know where who have not been uh, able to move around as much as they used to so uh, so yeah and DCRs have been really key in making sure that we that people get what they need to, to have uh, even during this very difficult period that have been uh, pushed on us mm. yeah uh, what do you think does this uh, crisis uh, make people to show more solidarity uh, I mean, as general as French society, because now probably the worst of this crisis is just coming uh, still uh, in the future, like, you know, economic uh, crisis. And uh, there will be needed, need, the, the, the sol a lot of solidarity will be needed. Uh, are you an optimist or, or a pessimist when it comes to the future? Uh, it's a difficult one. Uh <laughs> That's really difficult to say at this stage. Uh, we are still digesting the, the, the very difficult times that have been uh, uh, um, proving on the ground. And yeah, I think one of the main challenges that is yet to come is the question of the economical impact uh, of that period. I don't know, Etienne, if you, if you want to take this one first, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lorraine. Uh, you are the best. <laughs> no, as uh, as you say, it's a difficult question because we saw a lot of solidarity. I uh, I saw my neighbor that give that uh, start to make some masks from people from the street. They give tobacco, they give uh, they they give me money, alcohol, and so on. So it was uh, it was uh, funny because the. They, they don't uh, even uh, care of the people, but they, they some of them, some of the, of, of the neighbor, they, they, they ask us, uh, where is uh, uh, Frank? Where is uh, the other one? Because we saw them uh, uh, all, all days. Um, of course, we don't know actually, because um, uh, as you say, Lorraine, there is the, the, the part of the, the economical part that is, uh, that is uh, going, up uh, that uh, make us deciding uh, to open all the fronts and and uh, to 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 make the deconfinement. So, so we were thinking that uh, maybe it's going to change a little bit uh, the, the the way of life in France, and we are not sure actually that the, that uh, that kind of effect is going to 
to continue uh, because um, as you know uh, if uh, there is uh, more people uh, that are poor because they they, 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 they they lost their job and uh, in Toulouse for example we have Airbus but uh, we know that uh, you know in the Bordeaux was the same and uh, some of uh, the, the economical part of the con of the country for the land of Toulouse, it's going to be a big shit. And so um, when uh, there is a lot of uh, people that uh, lost their job, of course, in a psychological uh, social way, they are going to push down the people that are more poor than them, than them and, uh, and to, 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 to start to, to be in, a, in, the, in the good level. Good level. So if you use that, your time to help the drug addicts and the people from the street, why you don't use your time to the, your, your neighbor that is going to lose their job and so on. So it's going to be like that, I think, but I'm not sure because I'm not, uh, I'm not a predict, prediction, predictus or predictor. I'm not. A, I'm not um, a god. <laughs> I'm not god, so I can't. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can see what what is going to happen. And we have some hypotheses like that. Mm. Uh, of course, for for arm reduction, our work was really good because we work a lot together. Uh, we work a lot, uh, and we produce a lot of things relating to the the people that don't uh, use arm reduction in their program and actually some of them they start to change so i hope that uh, that kind of effect is going to to to, to stay i know that there is uh, some people um, from um, the part of housing that uh, they say oh it's really cool now because uh, they accept that I can uh, that I can drink. They accept that I can use drugs. They accept that I'm I'm not in a way of stopping because uh, in fact a lot of uh, the housing uh, urgency they say oh I give you uh, an house but uh, if I give you an house it's that you don't use drugs. I'm a little bit chaotic, making caricature, but it's a little bit like that. So that kind of uh, solidarity and that kind of uh, uh, human rights uh, is is going to i think stay and that's really cool for us and for them yeah okay so yeah thank you so uh, i'm gonna be more optimistic than you Etienne. so it's you know it's i think it's the first time might be the first time um so yeah i think solidarity comes in times of crisis more than ever uh, some that's something that we can see uh, even even if even if the social and economical impact is yet to be measured and we have to monitor that very closely but the progress that we've seen in terms of accepting arm reduction i mean it's really sad to see that we always need a health crisis to to make progress on that front to make that much progress on that front but now it has been proven effective and something like access to OSTs, uh, really more easy in pharmacies, for, in, for instance, or, or what, you've, what we've been saying about the outreaching team or the question of uh, virtual outreach, also the question of the online forums, um, the question of uh, the postal programs to access our um, reduction materials and so on. This is something that no one is going to put in debate ever again, I think. I mean, I'm not a god either, but I think that that's, it has been proven so effective uh, during this crisis that we might have set that in stone at some point, uh, hopefully. And the other thing, and then I'm gonna end on that for that question, is the question of the reform of the health services, because I don't think that we can't, I don't think we can uh, consider hospitals and uh, centers as a regular private sector, you know, for-profit uh, organizations as we used to start to do. Uh, meaning that the government, well, not only this one actually, unfortunately, have been really pushing for reform, for more liberal, liberal uh, economical management of hospitals and so on. And that is something that they might uh, not do as much. 
so we can have more room for clinical approaches, for training professionals in hospitals and so on. So that might be uh, another form of solidarity that we can push uh, from the institutional uh, point of view. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lauren. I think these are really uh, nice concluding words as well, because our time is uh, approaching its okay. end. Um, and I hope that you will be right, so we can use this uh, as an opportunity also in France, but all over Europe. You know, Lauren is a chairperson of the Civil Society Forum on Drugs, and it will be also interesting to see what will happen in the European level. Maybe at another time we can discuss that. Uh, so, uh, Lauren and uh, Etienne, thank you so much for being with us today. And um, thank you for all those who were watching us on, on Facebook. Uh, next week, on Monday, we will speak uh, with uh, professionals from the UK, uh, Matt Southwell from the uh, European uh, Network of People Use Drugs, and uh, Neat Eastwood from the Release, uh, a London-based human rights NGO. So please join us on Monday, 4 p.m. And uh, thank you again for our French guests and good luck with your work. Goodbye.